Last week, we spoke about the three layers of the human brain. Quick recap. We have three layers, basically. This is a bit of a simplification. If you're interested in academia and science and all this stuff, this model is a little bit questioned because it's oversimplified, but it works for practical purposes. We have the mammal brain, the brain of fight and flight, of instinctual response, reptilian in Swedish. We fight sometimes, we attack, we flight, or we freeze when we're under pressure or feel threatened. So then we got the mammal brain where reward systems and, and feelings uh, of different sorts starts to occur. And then you have the cognitive part of the brain and um, decision-making, gathering information, making prioritizations and stuff, the prefrontal cortex. Now, we said last week but that when the front part of the brain gets into overload, we basically regress backwards. Like when I came home Tuesday, I was feeling low, I was feeling unhappy, I was feeling tired, I was feeling kind of hopeless is too strong a word, but the rest of the week didn't look fun because my brain was tired, it needed some rest. I want to point to something today, which has to do with procrastination. We can see it's like an intro almost to talking about pro procrastination uh, two weeks from now. Um, many of you have seen a model that has to do with importance and urgency. If you've seen the important urgent model, just put a yes in the common field. If you haven't seen it, put a no. It's also called the Eisenhower matrix. It said that President Eisenhower introduced that to all his members of his White House staff back in the day. It, it has many names and it is a classic. So if you are familiar with the important urgent model, put yes in the common field. If you're not sure what I'm talking about or don't know, just put a no and we'll see. Marie says yes, Fiona yes, Hannah yes, Anna no, Maria yes, Arini yes. Important urgency model, familiar with it, put a yes. If not, put a you, no. Yes. Okay, let's go. So I'll explain it very quickly. And then I'm going to go deeper and draw some aspects of the model you might not have thought about before. We're going to talk about it in a new context, in a different way. Uh, actually, way I haven't seen it talked about before. But the thing is, when we use the same old thinking, we get the same old results. If you go, yeah, yeah, I've seen this model before. Sure, I know it. It's the important urgency, and you just put time in quadrant two and avoid quadrant three and four, and blah, 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 blah. Well, if you actually have the model as a model, but it doesn't impact the way you think during your day, it's not useful. It's just a model. If this model starts to shift your thinking, like how you see the world, then it's great. I introduce this model to people sometimes and some people go, yeah, that's interesting and nothing happens with their life. I had a customer 15 years ago, we spoke about the model and his whole life shifted. I'm not exaggerating from this model. He was a sales director, a huge responsibility, very stressed, got health problems. The doctor told him that Either you change job or you learn a new way to work and lead yourself or you might actually die, the doctor said. He had bleeding ulcers in his stomach and if he didn't transform his work, the doctor said, your health is a danger. That's a bigger story for some other time, but there was incidents around his health. He almost died, actually. Um, now, the model looks simple. It is like this. 
What is important is upwards. What is not important is downwards. And human beings mix that up with what is urgent, which is to the left and not urgent. And I'm gonna do this super quick because I'm gonna draw it again on my whiteboard in a minute and, and deepen it. So basically, what is important and urgent we need to deal with in life? There are crises, there are deadlines, we need to put out fire sometimes, and there is some time-based activities. And quadrant one, we simply need to deal with. What we do when quadrant one is done, we often jump to quadrant three instead. And we attend some meetings we shouldn't intend, and we do some admin that's not useful, and we deal with some mails we actually should not deal with then, and we tend to interruptions, and we adapt to other people's requests. Things that are urgent, because they are pressing right now, but they are actually not important. Then we get so tired, so we jump into quadrant four, and we spend time on meaningless activities with no value. Sit on YouTube for two hours watching cats uh, fall down from windows, or we do some other stupid stuff that we just feel, oh, why did I do this? Well, your brain got too tired, so you ended up in quadrant four. Now, quadrant two is the key to transformation. It's the key to increasing capacity. It's the key to developing yourself. It's the key to building new routines and habits. And there are things like time for reflection, clarify your intention and goals, expanding your relationships, health activities, planning and follow-up, learning, upgrading one's tools, and five, 10 other good things. Wednesday, we spent the full day, basically, inside quadrant two with a group of people. And after that day, that's when the one participant said, aha, wow, fun. Because when you hang out in quadrant two, it's great. Now, this sales director I mentioned realized looking at this model that he was either putting out fires and running close to deadline and handling crisis all week, or being in quadrant three, attending meetings. He said a good meeting in our company is viewed as a long meeting with many people. <laughs> Corporate people might recognize that. Uh, so he started to cut out. Sometimes he spent on meetings, he stopped some admin stuff, he transformed his mail habits, and he started to invest time in quadrant two. Everything changed for him. Health went up, well-being went up, results went up, management of team went up, and he started to take vacations he never took, he started to travel ways he never traveled, huge journey of self-discovery. I'm going to turn on my whiteboard right now and draw something about this model that people don't think about and that I think could be very, very, very helpful for you uh, and explain what actually goes on behind the scenes of this model. So I'll turn on the whiteboard. We'll close off this. thing here and just give me a second we're gonna put on the whiteboard like this so i'm gonna ask you for comments after this drawing so just listen with an intent to see something to discover something to recognize yourself uh, as a human being and as an individual in what i'm about to draw here and this can be a real eye-opener it's like here you are in life and right now you look like this, yes, you know. And you're a little like that. Now in life, you and I are, I was gonna say attacked. Well, it feels like that sometimes. There are things coming at us a lot. There are things to do. Our attention gets taken by things. Sometimes there is a crisis or something that just needs your attention urgently. Like Monica getting unwell this week, there were some things that needed to be rearranged, other teachers to find, and no real crisis, but if we hadn't dealt with it, it would have been 
unhappy results, you could more fires to put out, right? Then you attend meetings. Because people ask you to do that, or you call them yourself for this, that, and the other. Then there might be a deadline to work on. Something needs to be delivered sometime, and you need to do work on that. Then you have the mail to deal with. Somebody interrupts you. They walk into your door and say, hey, can you talk for a minute? Or you get a text and you feel the need to respond. Interrupt. It's just one or an interruption, is it? Yes, it is. Let's remove one. Interruption. New spelling there. Then you need to pick up your kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At daycare. If you have kids. Or you need to catch a train or something. And then um, there is another meeting. And there is more mail. And then suddenly you need to fix dinner. And then you need to pay your bills. And there's this constant stream of stuff coming at us. Now, our brain is not great at putting the stuff that comes at us into the category of what's important and what's not important. It's simply not good at that. Your brain, when it's triggered or a little tired, talks to you in a way that everything feels important right now. I need to attend this meeting. I need to check my mail. I need to check my text message. I need to deal with the person standing in my door. I need to do this. I need to pick, catch the train now. Oh, there's this deadline I need to work on. I'll do it on the train. Oh, God, somebody got sick. We need to find a replacement teacher for this. Oh, I need to pick up the kids soon. It's only half an hour later. Oh, God, I need to pay the bills tonight. Otherwise, we're getting late with the bills or something. It's this constant stream of input. What the model does, first of all, it helps us distinguish it's something that's super important. It's like the model draws a line here, says, hey, watch a minute. The things on top here, they are important. And the things below here are not important. And you need to use your common sense now, because of course, some meetings are important and some meetings are not important. When we asked corporate employees and leaders during two years, constantly, every group we led, we asked how many of your meetings would you rather not attend because it's actually not really worth your time and effort to be there. What do you think was the average response in percent of how many meetings people would rather not attend in medium-sized and large companies? You don't need to write in the comments. I just want to make you think. It was 40 to 60 percent. Average. Worst one was 85 percent. So people spend about half their time in meetings and meetings that they don't find useful. So they are not important meetings. And then people say, well, I can't tell before I get there uh, if it's going to be important or not, because I don't know, because there's no agenda for the meeting and blah, 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 blah. So you look for yourself. Of course, you need to check your mail, but you don't need to check your mail 14 times per day. That's not important. Of course, you need to deal with some interruptions is if they are important, but you don't need to deal with every interruption. You don't need to invite interruption. You can open your calendar after this Facebook Live and just pick out what two or three meetings are actually not worth my time next week. And deal with them responsibly. And you free up three hours right from having been on this Facebook Live. People say like, yeah, we're actually two people going to those meetings all the time. I can ask my colleague for an update. And wow, that was great. Freed up two hours next week. Or yeah, I could talk to the person leading the meeting. I just ask them if they actually need me this week. And um, I did that last week and I said, no, no, you're fine. You don't need to be here. So I'm serious. 
take five minutes right after this Facebook Live, open your calendar if that's the nature of your work and just look at what meetings is actually not important for me to attend next week. So you can spend your time on more important things. And I wrote things here below, not important, above important. Is eating dinner important? Yeah, most days it is actually. Is paying your bills important? Yes, it is. Is picking up your kids at daycare or after the football practice or something important? Probably is. <laughs> Be on time for the train, is that important? Yeah, it is. But you start to see on top of it that not all those things I put up on top there are urgent. Catching the trades is not urgent. So here, the line continues here. You can do like this. There is an other dimension here. It's the urgency. This side is urgent. This side is non-urgent. Quadrant four is basically down here where we escape when we're too tired and you waste your time. It's not important and it's not even urgent. So this is time waste. This is the interesting quadrant. What is it that is important for you, but not urgent, so it doesn't show up for you? It's like you need to do like this. You need to turn the other direction here and start looking at this side instead. Sorry for the gross human being here. You need to ask cut out for a moment every week or day this constant influx of stimuli and input and give your brain a rest and ask yourself okay let's see what's actually important this week or this month but it's not coming at me it's not pressing i might not even get reminders of it but it is important and here people start to realize the time for reflection is actually very important. I personally spend time reflecting on things every morning. It's not a single morning, maybe twice a month or something that I don't spend conscious time reviewing and reflection on things. Could be business targets, could be learnings I'm engaged in, it could be certain competencies I'm developing, the reflection time is built into my day every day. Time for planning, time to review what's planned, health activities. It was in the previous model, it goes on and on and on and on and on. Now picking up kids is never important for me, people say. No, sure, then picking up kids Sorry, they say it's never urgent for me. Well, then, then you keep picking up your kids in this box, right? You're always in good time to pick up your kids. But picking up your kids is one of those activities that start at lunch. It's not urgent yet, but it wanders this direction. Catching the train is not important for, sorry, it's not urgent for hours before the train leaves, but it might move into this quadrant. So, the principle here is that when you invest time in quadrant two, sorry for the unreadable letters here, if they are unreadable on your screen, uh, diminishes or lessens time in quadrant one and three. So the more time you, you invest in quadrant two, it reduces your time in quadrant one and sometimes quadrant three. Why do you procrastinate? Well, you're so in the moment with important, urgent things that you can't think and make good decisions. So often we procrastinate because something comes at us, but we're too tired to actually 
figure out the first next steps to get that handled. So we go, oh, deal with it later. Something comes at you and I should do this, but where should I start? And my God, where are the tools? Oh, it's too much to do. I'll do it later. So a first little tip is simply to allot time and plan in time for something you've been procrastinating. Put a time slot in your calendar long enough for you to not only do the thing, but also spend some thinking in the beginning of that time slot on the end result and the first next steps. So that was the first little tip and we get into the procrastination topics uh, in two weeks uh, we planned. Great, so question to you, what important non-urgent thing shows up for you that either you can put it in today before the day is over, or you can make sure that next week you actually commit to spend some time on that.